Hey, Katie, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing great, glad to see you. So we can dive in whenever you're ready. All right, yeah. All right, let's do it. So to start us out, tell us a little, about, a little bit about your career thus far and what goals are you moving forward? What goals are you looking forward to moving forward? Um, so I just graduated from the University of Washington. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And I was a 13 time All-American. Um, in my last year at Washington, I decided to try a new event and I ran the steeplechase. Um, I was third in NCAAs and I made the tri Olympic trials. Um, I was 10th at the trial, so that was exciting. And it was just a very like whirlwind kind of um, season, just like jumping into a whole new event. And I don't know if um, you or your viewers know what the steeplechase is, um, <laughs> but it's the it's a 3000 meter track event and it has like hurdles, barriers throughout and um, they're like 30 inches high and they're like railroad ties so they don't move and there's a water jump. It's a whole thing. So it was super fun being able to just like tackle a whole new event. Um, before that, I ran the 1500 and I was also fourth at NCAAs and then I ran the 3000 meters indoors where I was third. Um, I'm on the collegiate record DMR team. Um, I've made a few USA junior teams um, and I've recently gone professional and I plan to train and um, run professionally for the next few years. That is amazing. It sounds like you've had quite a year, quite a few couple of years, actually. That is incredible. Congratulations with everything. You are preparing for a 2024 Olympic debut. What has this preparation process been like on top of everything? So it's not a huge deal, but I just want to make sure it's Olympic trials because it's really hard to like, um, you mean, you still have to like for track and field, you have to show up to the trials and they always say Team USA is the hardest team to make. Um, so it's like you can't really ever um, say that you're for sure going to make the Olympics until you go through the trials. And so part of that process is just like preparing yourself for being the best version of yourself on, on that day, right? Like making sure that all of your training and like physical preparation and mental preparation like come together on the day of the Olympic trials, because arguably for the team USA, that's almost more important because, you know, you don't go to the Olympics without making the team first. So over the next three, you know, few years, it involves just like a lot of long days and, you know, a lot of hard work and gym sessions and track workouts and just like a lot of attention to detail. You know, of course you have to go for your run and you have to go to the weight room, but there's like a lot of little things um, that kind of add up like nutrition and sleep and um, just making sure you are stretching and you're taking care of like injuries before they happen. And so a lot of kind of like behind the scenes stuff that is like can be quite tedious sometimes. And so there's a lot of that. Um, but I mean, it's, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, I don't want to make it sound like I don't love what I do. Um, so I think it's just um, trying to take it day by day and stay super present. Um, I think that like when you focus only on like long-term sort of outcome focused goals, it's really hard to like enjoy what you're doing right now. Um, so you set, you know, long-term goals of like making the Olympic team, but then you set your know, like short-term like process oriented goals to help you kind of like feel like you're making progress in the meantime. And like, a, and those process oriented goals can be anywhere from like form to like, you know, getting more sleep and like things like that. And so right now I'm, um, in that stage of things. That is incredible and amazing, you know, at such a young age that you're able to do all these things and also have an understanding about those goals, those attributions. I absolutely love it. Now, let's talk about your campaign. Now, this is about mental health. As someone who's dealt with your own mental health struggles in your life, how have you coped and how have you gotten through? Um, I think that being able to separate your self-worth as like a human being from your success on the track is super important. And just knowing that like, I have a family who loves me no matter the outcome or no matter how I place or what time I run, it's just like something that you can like ground your foundation and your mental health in. And for me, that's, you know, um, really just enjoying what I do and, you know, having fun and not being so entirely like focused all the time that I don't like stop and appreciate and smell the roses every once in a while and just like appreciate how far I've come um and to be super present I like I run like for me personally I run into trouble when I start thinking about those like long-term outcome goals because it takes me away from where I am right now 
Um, so I just, you know, try and like, I have this gratitude log and for me every night, like writing down a few things that I'm grateful for that day, like really helps me stay focused or like stay present, um, on like what I'm doing that day. And it makes me kind of have just like a more positive outlook on the things that I'm doing and in life in general, just like, I think a life based in gratitude is one that like has more joy and happiness in it. Um, that's just how I like personally like address like, or like work on my mental health. But I know that like, it's a huge topic right now, especially with, you know, like Michael Phelps coming out and talking about his mental health as well as Simone Biles. And I think that it's going to be a topic of conversation, especially in sport. Um, and I think that the more people come out and like share their stories, the more people are going to talk about it and the more commonplace it's going to be. I absolutely love that. I love the gratitude log. I think that's such a beautiful idea. Besides that, do you have any other advice about staying present and in the moment? Um, like a specific example, uh, sometimes when I'm running, I tell myself to focus on my feet. And I know that sounds kind of bizarre. It's just like a quick, like focus on your feet. And then I try and like feel the impact of my foot on the ground. And that actual like sensation of like the towing off, like brings me right back to like what I'm doing right now. Cause it's really easy to like, you know, be like out for a run and like thinking about all the things I have to do that day or like, just like not entirely there. And so the focus on your feet is just like, for me, a way to like ground myself and like physically feel what I'm doing right now. Um, so that's kind of one that you, I use like what in training, but also in racing. Um, and yeah, I think just being able to like, remind yourself I got I you know set little reminders or you can write little sticky notes like um just kind of depends on what works for you I love that now something really interesting about you is that you're kind of living a legacy here your mother is former long distance star Lisa Larson Rainsberger how has growing up with this influence in your life impacted your career and your love for it and just the sport in general yeah so um, the relationship I have with my mom is super unique and our relationship I, I would say it's not always been super easy easy. I think that that we have a lot in common and sometimes it's easy to kind of like butt heads. Um, (laughs) but I wouldn't change it for the world because like at the end of the day, she knows what I'm going through and she's able to empathize and sympathize with my situation. And, um, she's able to support me in a way that she wouldn't like be able to, if she didn't know exactly what I was going through. And there's never been any pressure from her to achieve anything. You know, I grew up playing soccer, um, playing every other sport, but running. And I'm the only one of my siblings that runs. And so it feels like running is something that kind of bonds us in a way, like in a unique way, like it's something that we can share together. Um, And I think it's super special. That is so beautiful. And that's an incredible story. Moving on, let's talk better health. Tell us a little bit about this campaign with Thorin. Yeah, so the Better Health campaign is incredible. I think first off, the education that Thorne is doing and the awareness is is really important because it's education for everyone. It's not just for elite athletes or people that are, you know, trying to make Olympic teams. It's for all. And it really just helps you put into perspective, like, why am I taking this? Like, why should I be taking this? And I think that education piece um, is kind of what drew me in at first, especially because it was kind of like similar to what I studied in school and I'm a big proponent of health and education. And so that like, that kind of was like a, like a hook, but then just their like drive to produce quality ingredients and like, just be able to like know what's going into your body and like have that high quality reassurance is from like as an athlete, it takes the stress off of like not knowing what I'm putting into my body. And then Thorn certified for sport, which is also really important. Um, I think knowing exactly like what I'm taking is super huge just because there's been a lot of um, like drug or like, or like false, like positive tests and stuff. And so just like having that reassurance from Thorn and like knowing what I'm taking is certified for sport um, has been a huge, like, uh, thinking of the right word like it's just one less thing that I have to think about um but I think that like Thorne's drive to like not only like help with the like physical 
side of things like physical well-being, but I think that um, they're supporting, you know, their athletes and like me through like overall health and well-being. And I think that like our relationship is one that's a partnership. Um, and I'm just like so excited to be a part of it. Tell me a little bit about what Thorns products do to help those who are struggling and what positive changes you've seen since taking them. Yeah, so I um, find that like the a daily elite like multivitamin has been just really good for help like filling in like some of the gaps. You know, like I do, I try to do a good job, like, you know, eating a healthy diet, but I think that the, the multivitamin does a really good job of like supplementing, like, you know, just vitamins and minerals that like maybe sometimes we're a little deficient in. And so that like, I think it's just like, I feel overall, like I have a bit more energy and I feel like I'm just like addressing all of those needs. Um, but also like specifically for sport, the catalyte with the amino complex, like right after I work out or run has been just like really, sometimes like it's hard to eat right after you work out. And like, there's that important recovery period. So I find that being able to like drink that has been really good in terms of just like recovery right after I work out. Um, I love the, like the whey protein, like I put that in a smoothie, like almost every day now that it's hot outside the chocolate way. I make a smoothie with that daily, like after I lift or after I run. Um, and then the magnesium before bed. Um, I think that the magnesium, like sometimes I'm up at altitude. And so sometimes at altitude, it's a little bit harder to sleep. Um, so the magnesium and the melatonin have been really good for like, just like winding down and getting better sleep. I really love that they have so many different options and kind of different things for everyone's situation, yeah. which is amazing. Now, yeah. you personally, how do you think we can best work to improve mental health in the sports community? So it's hard because there's a lot of attention on the Simone Biles topic right now, because that's kind of a, like, I would just, it's what's prevalent. It's what's happening right now. Um, but it's also hard because I will never know what it feels like to under or like understand the pressure that she feels. And so it's hard for me to speak for everyone. Um, but I think like from one athlete to another athlete, I think it's really brave. And I think I'm like grateful that she's shown the athletic community that you can be strong and you can still need a break and that you can be one of the best athletes in the world and still ask for help. And I think that for this conversation to continue, I think athletes need to continue to speak up on like their struggles. And that's sometimes scary, like coming out, like as an athlete, we're shown like, you know, like we're supposed to be strong and brave and tough and coming out and saying like, I have struggled, like, I can't do this. I need help. Like that almost is harder than doing another rep or pushing yourself or, you know, not asking for help. And I think that as the conversation continues, you will probably see more and more people coming out and like sharing their struggles. And um, I think it's just like this, the direction the, that sport needs to go in. I 100% agree. What advice would you have for someone who wants to share their struggles? I would start small, like start sharing your struggles with someone that you trust. Um, it can be, you know, family, friends, teammates. Um, if you're on a, a like college team, like a lot of colleges should provide like a sports psychologist um, or some sort of like person in the athletic department. That's where I started. Um, I found that it was really helpful to have someone who had no stake in the game to share everything that I was going through. It was, you know, someone who didn't care how I performed, someone who didn't love me because they were their mom and they had to love me. You know, like it was just someone that like sat there and validated everything that I had to say and had no stake in the game. And all they wanted was for me to feel better. Um, so I know that, and that person is different for everyone. Um, but I find that like opening up and sharing on a small scale first, maybe gets you a little bit more comfortable with opening up and sharing the things. And to be honest, like that's a good place to start. I think that asking for help is a really good place to start. And like, we'll see, uh, you know, who knows, like 
you can use your platform for good. And sometimes that means speaking out and sharing what your struggles are. Um, but not everyone's comfortable doing that. And I don't think that like, you're going to see everyone coming out and doing that. Um, so I think that it really is kind of like an individualized um, approach and it kind of what you're comfortable with. Absolutely. I think that's a beautiful explanation. What resources are there available within the sports community to help those people who are feeling those certain ways with those struggles? Yeah. So that's a really good question and kind of one that I'm unable to answer because I don't know. Um, I re like, I know like for school wise, I went through my like medical training kind of like room and they helped put me in touch. Um, but being new to the sport, like that would be super helpful. I don't know. Maybe that's the direction we need to go. Maybe there needs to be like a, a Olympic committee, like resource for athletes. Um, maybe it's something that I haven't learned about and should learn about. Um, but, you know, the fact that I know where to go get a Cairo and a massage, but I don't know where to get like help for mental health resources, like maybe that's the direction that the sport needs to go in. 100% agree. And I think that these conversations are really going to help those communities move towards those specific conversations, which I really love. On a personal level, what are your inspirations in your own career and these movements that we talk about? Yes. So personal inspirations are super scary to talk about and voice out loud because you have these goals, right? And they're super like, they're scary because you're, you're putting yourself out there and you're being vulnerable and you're saying like, I want this. And so then when you, you know, when you say that, like, I want to make an Olympic team, um, like there's a little bit of vulnerability involved in saying those sorts of things. Um, so for right now, I'll just say that, <laughs> um, I want to be the best version of myself every day and just like show up to the starting line being like, happy and confident in myself and not like fearful or dreading you know like the like what if situation if I don't make this team like I just think that for right now like I have experienced a bit of like performance anxiety and so like my goals going into the future are just trying to focus on being the best version of myself and trying to control the things that I can control which are my attitude and my effort like there's a lot of things that you can't control a lot of outside factors and so for now, my process oriented goals um, are to just be the best version of myself. And if I'm the best version of myself, who knows what could happen? I could make an Olympic team. So. Um, I'd say that I'm a bit more like my mom than I care to admit sometimes. <laughs> but I would say it's largely internal. I would say like my drive for like excellence in athletics kind of follows me into other areas of life as well. And, you know, sometimes I can be my, um, my biggest or my, my worst critic, but also my biggest motivator. And um, I think that it's important to like know where your drive comes from. And like, for me, it's just to like push my limits to, and to see what I can do. Like, I don't know what I can do. And that's kind of cool. Like, I want to find out. Like, let's go see. Um, so, yeah, there are days you don't want to do it. And that's okay. <laughs> I don't think any athlete, I think an athlete would, would be lying if they said they woke up every day and were super excited to run every day. Like, that would probably be a lie. But I think in general, like, I love what I do. And I love the way I feel when I'm doing it. And so I think that's probably my biggest motivator. That is incredible, Katie. I am so excited to keep seeing everything that you do. You are amazing. Congratulations on everything. And thank you so much for joining me today.